Hey, it's Dave. So, uh, hot day out at the property, but a good day. Got a lot done out in the woodlot, but uh, today we're gonna do the last of the penny challenges. So I got the, got my uh, Savage Mark II. I'll show it to you here. Hold on a minute, let me turn around so you see it. All right, so Savage Mark II, it's got a uh, scope on it. BSA Sweet 22 scope, which, is an interesting scope, but we're not really gonna spend that much time looking at it. Um, I did come out and shoot some practice rounds and kind of got it sighted in for what we're shooting. Is a Winchester 222. It's the 22 36 grain bullet with the hollow point copper plated. So, um, anyways, it's the same bullet we've been using all through the competition. Uses these little. Um, magazines and uh it's a bolt action rifle it's the savage mark ii the one i have was made in canada and i bought it in the early 2000s used i don't know what year's manufacturing stuff so uh it's one of those we'll do a shoot around with sometime later it has a really hard trigger pull so it's hard to be super accurate with it. all right dave out All right, well, there's round one. I don't think I got any, but we'll walk down and take a look. Let's see what we did. We'll give her a whirl again. And again, I'm shooting at the ones on the left, top left. So I'll try that again this time. All right, let's go see what we did. We got one, so let's see. We can do another. I'm gonna go lower on the left. Let's see if we can hit that one. Lower left, bottom.
All right, third round, let's go see what we did. All right, well, we got one more. So, two so far, we got two rounds to go. Let's see if we can improve on that. Well, that's good. Then you shot that one because I think it's the one that hit it. <laughs> All right, let me go down there and check. All right, well, we got one more. So let's see if we can keep it going. I'm gonna go for the one on the top far right. That was a lucky shot. I think we got it there. Up on the top, second in. Well, that's it. So let's go see what we did. Well, looks like the Savage got five. We'll dig them out here in a minute. But there's one. Definitely got that. Two, three, four, five. And then these two left. It looks like one must have fell off. So, yeah, got five, just like the Henry. 
So um, interesting though, it looks like, to me, looks like the patterns are a little tighter. I mean, I had, before I got that one, I had some pretty close ones. Same here. One, two, three. Uh, that was the first shot. Same there, not many on that one. I really spent a lot of time getting this one. <laughs> so, all right. So that was just a pretty good um, scope. Took a minute. I probably <clears throat> hurried the first round a little bit. So maybe it was on me. So let me dig them out and we'll look at the pennies. Hold on a minute. All right. Well, I got all five. Back stop worked. So very similar to the one with the Henry. Some bent, a lot of pass-throughs on this one. This one completely destroyed. This one, you can see it just clipped, took that whole corner out. And this one was a complete through, and here's the other part of it. So, yeah, impressive. I, I don't know, I mean, it's like a little bit more velocity hitting them today than it was the other day with the Henry. Henry had more of them bent. All right, let me turn around and try to wrap this up. Well, so, I, you know, I had a goal of trying to get myself to be a little bit more focused when I'm shooting. Not that I have errant shots, but I do think it's important to try to improve. And uh, I thought, you know, what would be a good exercise? And I always think of the aim small, miss small philosophy from the Patriot. And, uh, you know, a penny's a small target. And 30 yards, pretty good distance. So, uh, especially out in the woods. So I figured I'd try that. Uh, 50 yards would have been hard on the open sites. I don't think I could have even seen the penny. But 30 yards worked pretty good. And so we saw the Henry, I got five. Um, I was surprised with that result, quite frankly. I think it has to do more with the accuracy of the Henry than uh, my shooting abilities at all. Um, and if you doubt that this is hard, try, try it on your own. Uh, maybe you have much more success than I did. The um, Smith & Wesson uh, was the most surprising to me. Uh, I would have thought I would have had more. I didn't have any penny hits. Um, but I think it it's a testament really to what that uh, scope, um, the red dot's all about. If, if I was to aim at a metal plate, a four-inch metal plate at 30 yards, I wouldn't miss it at all. I'd hit every one. I, and I know because I've tried it. I've gone through a whole magazine and never missed on a metal plate. The thing is though, that's what a red dot does. It just gets you onto a target. It's not precision, at least not for me, not that red dot isn't. Maybe there are others out there that do it, but this red dot to me, it just puts you on target. So it's really hard without some other kind of scope to see, you know, where I was missing left or right, you know, to adjust. And I didn't have that for the Henry, so I figured it was unfair to try to add it to the Smith & Wesson. So it was what it was, you know, I just didn't get any. Um, but it did, you know, didn't make, I think the reasons, you know, could have been my inaccuracy. But I do think it was the, you know, what does a red dot do on that, on that, um, on the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522? I don't think it's inaccurate. I think it did what it, you know, is meant to do. And then the... So I had the Savage Mark II. Um, it really likes this Winchester bullets. I'm telling you, it's probably some of the more accurate shooting I've done. And it likes it when the barrel's warmed up. And that's the other thing too. I did all this cold, so there was no warming the barrel up before I started. So the first rounds were always a little bit more inaccurate. And you could definitely see that on the Savage. As it got warmer, it was definitely getting more accurate. And, um, and this, you know, the ninth thing with the scope, I could adjust if I saw it was a little left, I could go right. And to some degree, I guess that worked, but uh, at least one round, it was the first shot. So that got the penny. So, you know, adjusting had nothing to do with that. So, uh, but it did, did definitely help me uh, focus. I, I definitely uh, spent more time. So the lessons I learned, I definitely, I, I slowed down and controlled my breathing control my finger pull if you were to pull the trigger on the savage you go oh gosh i don't have something to measure it with but it's a really stiff trigger and uh, so you have to really you know slow down um the smith and wesson's a really light trigger and the henry's a really smooth trigger 
And so, you know, it's, it, it made me focus on my breathing and on the target, the right parts of the target, you know. And um, I think that's what I wanted at the end. Um, so I don't know if there's a winner or a loser as far as the guns go. Um, I think it's more on me. The biggest thing I learned really was the, you know, importance on slowing down, focusing on your trigger pull, you know, nice and smooth, and then try to match it with the bottom, you know, at the, at the full exhale of your breath, you know, and then do that. And I was much more accurate at those points than I was any other time. So uh, made me focus on that. So I think that was the lesson I learned. It was a good lesson. Um, to me, it's a fun little exercise. Uh, I don't know if you enjoy it or not, but I did. And so uh, um, anyways, I'll have to think of something else to do next time. I don't know what, but I'll think of something. Um, I don't know, I kind of like shooting pennies. So I have to think of something else to do with them maybe. Hey, let me add one thing. I know I've yammered on too long, but the other thing that was important to understand too was the ammo I'm using. So, um, so this is a target ammo. And um, so I knew it, one, ammo uh, shoots differently out of the, each of the different guns you use. And you can see the Savage really seemed to like this Winchester. Yeah. The Henry, not, not so much. It had trouble loading a couple times. And one time it refused to load one of the rounds. Smith & Wesson had trouble ejecting three three or four rounds. So um, I would say uh, they didn't like it as much, but um, you definitely could see uh, the accuracy, you know, was, was different. Um, I'm not using a bench rest. Um, you know, it's me sitting on a bench. It simulates that like you're in a tree stand. You got something to rest your arms on, but you're still, you know, things are moving around and everything's moving to your heartbeat. Um, so, uh, but, uh, the point I want to make though is ammo matters and so if you if you want to see a really cool series yeah, Buffalo Outdoors, I love his channel. He has some really neat stuff and I've learned a lot watching his channel But um, he did a whole series on 22 ammo to find out what was the best ammo for his particular uh, gun that he uses and so um, I'll put a link to the first one in this series and uh, if you got if you got the time, it's it's worth it. I I look forward to it each week, seeing the next one and then the final challenge that he did, and seeing which ammo was the best. And it surprised me, and um, because I just I I would have figured some of the um, ammos for a match would have played a little bit better, but it is what it is. And so I learned a lot from that too. And you could see that here also. Ammo matters. I think I would have got better results if I had used it match ammo instead of this is just you know as you call um it was the next thing in my inventory to come out and just plank with and so that's what i use and it's winchester 222 i mean it's 222 rounds in a box a 36 grain with a copper um coated hollow point you know it's nothing special it's a target round at the time it was very cheap now it's I, it's like gold but at that time it was cheap so uh, anyways it's it does matter, so, you know, matter. so I want to add that, so I've talked too much. All right, there you go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I do appreciate it. And uh, like I always say, make kindness your business. Um, it's an easy thing to do, uh, share a little kindness. But it's hard when things aren't going your way. So take that extra effort and be kind, even though you don't want to, and see what happens. Kindness uh, can really change things. All right, so like I always say, Dave out.